Can we just all agree that the best scene of this episode is possibly the one with Android 8 cameo? Like, I don't know if it's just pure nostalgia, but something about seeing Android 8 was very endearing to me. Now, I'm obviously joking when I said it's the best, but something about Dragon Ball Super showcasing the old cast is very awesome. Actually, one of my most memorable moments in Dragon Ball Super in its entirety is the scene where Goku runs into a rally, and Goku's expression was the best in that scene. And also, speaking of character interactions and androids, I feel like it would have been so cool if Android 16 was in future Trunks' timeline. What I mean by that is I feel like Android 16 was a missed opportunity in the future Trunks arc. Like, think about it, if Android 16 was helping Trunks in the fight against Goku Black, it would have been so awesome. Because not only we we see a character that many people loved, but I feel like it could have gave us a really interesting uh, idea that Android 16 actually fulfills his uh, destiny in trying to kill Goku. But instead of killing Goku, he's trying to kill Goku Black. So I feel like, I don't know, it's just me. I know it has, this has nothing to do with the episode, but do you guys agree that if Android 16 was in future Trunks' timeline, it would have been so cool to see him like fighting along Trunks and just helping him out and helping him with a time machine. Hey, maybe Bulma can actually like improve Android 16 and make him do Super Android 16. I, I know this is just like, <laughs> like uh, fan fiction, but go God damn it, it would have been it would be awesome if it was in Dragon Ball Super. But anyways, moving on to the episode. The episode was pretty surprising to me because not only did it have surprisingly good and decent animation, like some of the animations in this episode, it was inconsistent but it was still overall good. Like something about the Future Trunks arc um, animation, it, ha it has always been inconsistent throughout the fight. Like uh, the early fights with the uh, Trunks against Goku Black, that was shit. But then it starts to get better and better and better. And in this episode, it was pretty good. Also, another shocking thing about this episode is actually quite literally shocking was the scene where Zamasu just brutally obliterates this human. Like, it was honestly just shocking to me, again, the puns, but it was very shocking when I saw just someone completely die. It's like, uh, it's different than when Beerus kills Zamasu because at least Zamasu was a was an evil villain and he wasn't human and he kind of deserves it. it, deserved it, he was a dick. But this dude, like, he didn't see it coming, he just like, like that, he just got erased. Which to me, like, I was like, whoa, to Toei Animation actually has the balls to show something like that. So maybe we can actually get blood. Or maybe not. But seriously, Merge Zamasu is probably the most hacked Dragon Ball villain ever. Like, Cell was hacks. Majin Buu was insanely hacks. But Zamasu is like an entirely different level. Like, the dude is not only immortal, but he's a living Zenkai boost. And he's basically what they tell you in this episode. Not only did the Potara made them stronger, but his power is basically infinity. Or actually his potential to get stronger is infinite. Which I think is pretty cool, but I'm kind of worried about that. Because if you're going to introduce a villain that has seemingly infinite power, then you're not going to beat him with conventional methods. Which I don't have a problem, it actually adds a layer that Dragon Ball Super has been lacking, which is fucking tension. We haven't had this much tension in such a freaking long time. And I think this is a very good way to bring tension, but I'm actually worried about how they're going to conclude this tension. Are, are they just going to do the Mafuba? Like, I know that, that Vegito is a thing, I'm going to talk about it in the end of the review, but I'm just saying like... Uh, I hope the way they defeat Zamasu is not just a really cheap way, you know, where, you know how Bio Broly got killed because water killed him? I don't want some bullshit to happen to uh, merge Zamasu where he gets defeated by some really uh, stupid way. But hey, that's just me. Anyways, let's, let's talk about Zamasu's abilities. Zamasu, to me in this episode, is screaming. He's literally screaming, I want to be in Xenoverse. The reason why is because this dude named all his attacks. My boy named the first move 
Blades of Judgment, which is by the way an attack by Goku Black. He used that attack against Goku when he stabbed him with the uh, with the blades. There, uh, there were colored blue back then, if you remember an episode I think it was 63. Uh, I think the really great thing about this move, or the interesting thing we think about this move, is that the blades actually explode after they hit the target. Which is a pretty neat t trick because not only it's fast, but even if they hit you or miss you, they will still explode, which will guarantee you a damage on your opponent. Now, the second attack of Zamasu is the uh, Lightning of Absolution, which is the Lightning Attack of Absolute. I, I don't know. Uh, anyways, the last move is probably the super finishing move that's going to be in Xenoverse, which is the Holy Wrath. And guys, I need that move in Xenoverse. I need it for my character and I need it now. And by the way, speaking of things that are, are, are supposed to be in Xenoverse, um, I, know, I don't know why I'm talking a lot about Xenoverse, it's probably because I've been playing Xenoverse all day. But anyways, the thing that I really want in Xenoverse is the father-son Gallic gun moment, which, is, which probably solidifies the fact that Vegeta in Dragon Ball Super is probably the best Vegeta. Like, I will always fuck with Vegeta in Dragon Ball Z. Like, Vegeta in Dragon Ball Z is always my dude. He's always gonna be my favorite Vegeta and I'm always gonna be biased for him. But the Vegeta in Dragon Ball Super has really amazing character development. Even though I don't really like him that much, but I but I really respect the character development that I really respect how he's portrayed in Dragon Ball Super. So whether you like it or not, you can still appreciate the writing of Vegeta, which which probably makes him the best character in Dragon Ball Super in terms of character progression. I don't know, that's just me by the way, that's an opinion. Because even though, like I said, I don't like it much, I still think it's pretty cool from a writing perspective. Now moving on, and before I start talking about the preview, I just want to mention that uh, the block where, Zama where Zamasu blocks both Goku and Vegeta's punches really reminds me of how Whis blocks Goku and Vegeta's punches during their sparring match, or how Whis blocked Beerus and Goku's punches. Now I'm not trying to insinuate that Zamasu is as strong as Whis, he might be stronger, he might be weaker, I don't know. I, I know you guys are going to fight against each other in the comment section, so I'll let you guys do that. But I think there is a potential here that Zamasu might be the strongest character aside from the Omni King. And that is why I think it is fair that we have Super Saiyan Blue Vegito fighting Zamasu. Because guys, if you think about it, Vegito is an OP character, he's extremely strong, and it seems that he is manhandling uh, Zamasu in the preview. Now I'm sure v SS Blue Vegito is, go is going to like have his hands full uh, against Zamasu, but at the same time you have to think that Vegito is essentially fighting someone who is both immortal and limitless in power. So. I can't really see Vegito actually beating Zamasu. I can see Vegito like slowing him do down until uh, Trunks uh, uses the Mafuba again, or they use other another tactic. But here's a theory that I have for how they're going to beat uh, Zamasu, and this is just a theory. If you see the um, the preview, you see that Zamasu has this sluggish look on him. And if you if you notice in the beginning of the review, I I mentioned Bio Broly because really it uh, reminded me of how Bio Broly had the sludge face and how he looked really messed up. Uh, I know it's not the same, but it could be that there is a problem with the fusion of Zamasu. I don't know if it's because they fuse without powering down, because if you remember, uh, to successfully use the Patara fusion, you have to fuse both in your base form. I'm not sure if that's really the reason, because uh, from my understanding, uh, it, the, the reason why you should fuse in your base form is not to affect your lifespan. And Zamasu is supposed to be immortal, so maybe that cancels out. Uh, we don't know. But I really have a feeling that Zamasu has really some bullshit weak weakness because the writers base it essentially made a character with no limits. So you'd have to expect that they're going to beat him by finding out his weakness, like some fatal weakness, some mistake he did. But that's just me. We're going to find out soon. So tell me what you guys think. Tell me if you enjoyed this episode. Tell me if you like this review. Tell me your thoughts in the comment section. I really enjoy reading your comments. 
But uh, overall, if you enjoyed this video, then please rate, comment, and subscribe. And uh, peace.